In the early 1950s, in this little island of Borneo, there were mosquitoes that had malaria. If a mosquito bit you with malaria, you got malaria. And if you got malaria, eventually you died. It was not good. And at the same time in the US, in the New York Times, an article was written that suggested that we'd basically solve the malaria problem by spraying a chemical, DDT, which is a poison, that would solve this problem and kill the mosquitoes. And so the World Health Organization decided to spray the island of Borneo with DDT. And they were able to reduce malaria-infected mosquitoes from 40% to 1%, which is awesome. And that's incredible, right? I mean, if any of us were able to, to come in as a consultant to an organization and say, I can take your problem and I can shrink that problem from 40 to 1%, we get paid. Unfortunately, the dead mosquitoes were not the only issue, right? Because there were caterpillar wasps that also got poisoned and they died. And if caterpillar wasps die, then what that means is caterpillars don't die. And caterpillars ate through the roofs and houses of the folks on Borneo. So bad that it was like a massive tornado had come through. Hurricane level damage from caterpillars. Now, on the ground were the mosquitoes and the caterpillar wasps that were now dead, and the lizards ate them. And the lizards got poisoned, and so the lizards died. The cats ate the lizards, and then the cats died. And because the cats died, the syphilis-infected mice not only propagated all across the island, they started killing the people on the island. Why am I telling you all of this? Because at the end of the day, cause and effect is not something that we can always predict. It is sometimes best viewed in the rearview mirror. And so I'm not going to try in any way, shape, or form with the minutes I have with you today to try and give you best practices. I'm not going to try and prescribe for you the right answer because the reality is I don't know if a single suggestion might have tons of negative consequences for you. What I can do is just look in the rearview mirror and tell you a little bit about the work that we did recently when a company called ColourPop came to Crowd Favorite, where I work, and we were working with WP Engine, and they said, should we really stick with WordPress? Should we really stick with WooCommerce? Should we stick with WP Engine? Or should we just go somewhere else? Because we want to grow. We want to see 10, 20x. And this was at the beginning of the year, and we had nine months before we were going to get to, towards the beginning of the year, and we had nine months before we were going to get to Cyber Monday. And we had a target and a goal of Cyber Monday to be able to stay fully engaged all day. And it was going to take a lot of work. And so we had to ask the question. And what I want to do is just talk to you a little about what we learned over that time. Does that make sense? Awesome. So I will tell you this. If we're going to talk about scaling, if we're going to talk about learning about scaling, your success, fundamentally, is tied to your desire and willingness to experiment. There is no one best practice for all the stores. It depends on what you're selling, who you're selling to, how you're selling, how they're paying. And you won't know the answer to what makes sense for you unless you're willing to test and experiment. If you take nothing, away, nothing else away from what I'm talking to you today, just know this, right? Take a picture of the screen, and just be like, okay, I got it. I can go home and tell my boss, right? Unless we are prepared to experiment. I once sat with the chief scientists of Amazon. We were sitting down talking about the experiments they run on, and I'm not joking, I don't know if you've done this, but if you've ever bought something at Amazon, and I, I hate using the Amazon example because all of our clients come to us and they're like, I have a $5,000 budget, but I'd like to do what Amazon does, and you're like, stop talking to me, <laughs> right? You know what I'm talking about? But I, I have to use the example because I'm sitting with a chief scientist and we're talking and he says, well, we run hundreds of tests concurrently on any given page at any given moment, and we can get enough data. I mean, you, you heard people talking about like what, you know, people saying it takes four weeks 
Well, it takes four weeks for most of our sites to get enough data to determine if something is statistically significant. At Amazon, it takes like four minutes. Right? The number of people that are going. So I'm, I'm asking him, like, what? And he says, well, for example, you know when you put something in your cart, you buy it, and when you're done buying it, you know how you get that little bit of text that says, do you want to let your friends know that you made this purchase and there's some social links? It's like, well, we've tested 16 different variants of that phrase. And within two or three hours, we know which one works best. And that's just one of 50 tests on that page. And that's after you made the purchase. And you're like, that's just crazy. If you're not prepared and willing to experiment, uh, then you're just going to copy someone else. And if you copy someone else, you don't really understand their context, which means that the results you get may not be so great. So the first lesson we learned is that defining the target right and defining the right target are two different things. You know what happens when people ask you about WooCommerce and can it work? And what do they say? Well, can it scale? Well, how many SKUs can it support? And you're like, SKUs? Who cares about SKUs? Like a person doesn't go to your store and say, add all the SKUs to my cart right now, check out. So what does it matter? Or someone else says, well, how much revenue can you do you know, per minute, per day, per hour? And you're like, well, it totally depends on your product price. We were selling lipstick. You know how much it costs to sell, you know, how much a, a, a stick of lipstick costs? You, you, you may not. I know way more about lipstick than I ever thought I'd ever know. <laughs> Six bucks. Six bucks. Do you know what it takes to sell millions of dollars when your unit price is $6? Right? So don't get confused with, oh, it's about SKUs, it's about variance, it's about revenue. Stop. Understand the context you're in and define the right metric. We sat down with ColourPop, we sat down with WP Engine, and we started working through what's the right metric. Because if we're selling something and we're only evaluating revenue, then we're only capturing, when we're talking about scale, we're only capturing something that's completed. But if you're in WP Engine's shoes or any host shoes, you're like, well, hey, I still have a cost for the guy that puts something in a cart and then leaves. And you're like, well, of course. We still have to support that. So together, we sat and brainstormed and walked it all through. And we finally came out with our metric, our metric that I recommend to you. Add to carts per minute. Add to carts per minute. That was our metric. And it galvanized the entire crowd favorite team, the entire ColourPop team, and the entire WP Engine team. As we sat down and worked it through, add to carts per minute. I am happy to tell you that on Cyber Monday, we were able to get to 2,000 add to carts per minute. If someone tells me that WooCommerce doesn't scale, I laugh. And then I ask them if they have to support. To, you want to have fun? Go to a conference that's not like this. Go to an everyday, I was at traffic and conversion right? Internet marketers, a whole bunch of players, and there is a shopping cart uh, company that does things where they're going to connect into, and they all have plugins for WooCommerce and everything else, and you go up to them and you go, now I understand you're a SaaS, that means I'm going to take data from my site, push it out to your site, get data back, bring it back over. How's that going to work with my traffic? Well, we scale. You scale? How well do you scale? Oh, we're, we're fantastic. That's a very technical answer, thank you. Um, <laughs> Can you support 2,000 add to carts per minute? And the guy looked at me, right? And I could, his, he has his name badge on, so he's, he's their top dog. And he looks at me, he's like, are, are you, is that a hypothetical? I'm like, no, we just did it a few months ago. Said, that's insane. But that single metric allows us to get everybody on the same page. We're measuring what counts. Does that make sense? Awesome. Scaling WooCommerce, lesson number two, is that it takes more than just setting up. If you're going to do a gift card, which we were working with them, if you're going to do a coupon code, you have to know what's happening in the code. It's not just configure it. You have to know in the code what calls are being made and whether or not that's going to be a problem for you. In our case, there was a problem, right? Because one of those plugins was doing something like how many... Uh, people can potentially use this code, and it was making those queries and table scans over data, even though we weren't using that feature, and so it was creating a massive amount of queries that we didn't need. And so we wrote a custom plugin for it. You're going to need to know more than just, can I get it configured? 
The third one, I don't know how many of you know my friend Brian. Brian is laying on a couch right now. But Brian doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to Brian if he's laying on a couch because Brian loves testing. He loves testing so much that he wrote tests, and when he was done writing tests, he wrote some more tests, and when that was done, WP Engine said, well, we want to test something. He said, let me write those for you too. Why? Because he just loves testing. If you're going to hire a developer, hire someone who loves testing more than anything else. Because we tested and tested and tested. Because we had to know, while we were testing, and, and I, I can't say enough wonderful things about our partners over at WP Engine, we were running tests, and they had staff watching our tests and making changes to configurations to see what the result was of our changes and their changes to see what worked and didn't. Which means you can't pick a host casually. You need to pick a partner, a partner who seriously engages with you on that journey. And you need to build a team. Because the reality is, while one of us was talking about one thing, while one of us was looking at transactions or volume or code, there was someone else who's saying, but don't forget this or don't forget that. We all have blind spots. You need to bring a team together so that someone else is mitigating yours. I want to end with one last warning. In the 90s, colonoscopies were done while you were awake. Today, thankfully, if any of you have to go get one, they'll just put you to sleep. You'll just wake up and be like, oh, hello. But in the 90s, they actually had you do it awake. And so some researchers actually put someone right next to somebody and asked them every minute, at the end of a minute, what's your pain level? What's your pain level? What's your pain level? And they captured the pain every minute of an entire colonoscopy. And some of them would last 14 minutes and some might last 28 minutes. And here's what they discovered, the research at the end of it, is that even if you had a longer period with discomfort, if it ended well, you said it wasn't that bad. The two factors that drove people's feeling at the end was the height of pain and how it ended. If you work with customers and you end well, even if there was that six minutes where it got really slow on the site and everyone was getting stressed, if you end well, people will remember it positively. If you end poorly, it won't be that way. My name's Chris Lama. I'm the CTO of Crowd Favorite. I love WooCommerce. Thank you very much. <laughs>